Well, my next guest does not mince words. He said this recently to the Sunday Telegraph. Listen to this. President Medvedev will be telling people in Davos why they should invest in Russia. I'll be there telling people why they shouldn't. I'll be explaining what happened to me as the largest foreign investor in Russia, how they expelled me and then killed my lawyer after complaining about corruption. Bill Browder is the founder and CEO of Hermitage Capital Management, joins me now from Davos. Bill, thanks uh, for being with us. And you know, you can just pick up any newspaper today, the Financial Times, uh, you can pick up the New York Times, and you can see the pictures this morning of all those uh, killed and injured in that Moscow bomb blast uh, to make that point that you are making about the dangers of investing in Russia. But why are you raising these alarm bells now? Well, the, um, uh, basically, Medvedev um, has come here trying to solicit Western investment into Russia, and he's saying it's all okay that we have a law-abiding country and it's a modern country and you should be comfortable investing. And my own experience tells, you, tells me otherwise, that um, after they kicked me out of Russia and killed my lawyer, they, they have to do something about this and other, uh, before they can actually start to um, uh, ask Western investors to come and, and uh, invest in Russia. Uh, but to be fair, Bill, on the other side, though, I mean, President Medvedev has acknowledged that there are problems of corruption in Russia, that they are trying to improve things for foreign investors. Uh, and even in the case you're talking about where, where your attorney uh, was killed or was, you know, died in prison, uh, you know, he has gone ahead and fired the head of that prison. So they are trying to make improvements. Well, um, in fact, they, they didn't. They, they, they fired the guy and then they reappointed him a couple weeks later to a different prison. And then the guys who killed my lawyer um, ended up uh, getting promoted in, in national honors afterwards. Um, uh, they've, they've done nothing to address the case of Sergei Magnitsky and, and they've done nothing to address the, the situation of corruption in Russia at the moment. But absolutely nothing. I mean, do you not acknowledge, though, that the Russian author authorities themselves do, uh, you know, however tragic and, and, and awful the circumstances are there, that they are, in fact, trying to improve uh, what they you know, trying to improve what is going on in Russia and that even companies that are investing in Russia, like Pepsi, like BP, they know about the problems there. They know those risks. Um, well, the, the answer is, is all, at the moment, is all words um, in terms of uh, trying to improve things. So there's not been any real um, uh, changes out there. And guys like BP are, know it better than anyone. They, they've already had two huge um, conflicts with Russians where they're taking away their stuff and arresting their people, coming up with false charges, etc. So I, I, uh, I have to say that, that you know, people sometimes go there in spite of the risks, but, but the risks haven't diminished for sure. Um, Bill, when did you start realizing these risks in your time there? Well, I, I basically, uh, it was always a risky place, but it got riskier and riskier um, towards uh, the middle middle of Putin's um, presidency. And so, uh, I, I guess it, it became most profound to me when when uh, I was expelled from the country after complaining about um, corruption in the companies I was investing in, which which happened in 2005. And uh, right. and then uh, but, beyond that, right. it just I mean, got worse and right. worse and worse. Well, because you've been investing there, I think, since the 90s in Russia. I mean, some have asked, including you know, some private uh, Russian officials have said, look, why is Bill raising these questions now? Why didn't he get out sooner if it was such a corrupt system? I mean, you know, he had four, he made four and a half billion dollars in his fund, but he waited until after he made that money to start raising these alarm bells. Well, that's actually not true. If, if, if you do any press search on our company, what you'll see is that starting in 1998, um, we, we did a, a major, major um, a campaign to fight corruption at, at every step of the way. We were complaining about it. Um, you, you could probably read 5,000 press articles about us. and They've written Harvard Business School case studies about us complaining about corruption. We were doing it from the very start. That's what ended up getting But then why getting, didn't you walk uh, away sooner the then? But Bill, the then why didn't you walk away sooner? For, for a while, we were actually making progress in our fight against corruption. We would publicize things and then they would do something about them. From about uh, 1999 to 2004, we would put, this, put, put all this information out into the open and people would get fired. There would, there would be changes okay. of laws and so on and so forth. Uh, Bill, at Davos, if sure. you by chance uh, meet up with the president, President Medvedev, uh, what are you going to say to him? Uh, I'm going to say, um, uh, how can you um, have the gall to ask anybody to invest in your country when you kicked me out and you had and my lawyer was killed and you've done nothing about it? How, how can you ask other people to put themselves in the same harm's way? 
Right, but that's that's pertaining to you. But Bill, you know, you're on a campaign for a wider uh, wider awareness for other companies on investing in Russia. What? Are you going to? Propo- would you want to propose solutions to Medvedev? Uh, what answers do you want? What exactly? Well, I, you know, I, I, everything that he says sounds good. If you read his speeches and you thought, thought and, and, and you had no no way of, of uh, seeing whether that stuff was being implemented, you say, "Wow, this sounds like a really progressive man with a really great plan." Um, but if you do any kind of analysis at all, you realize that every single thing he says, and he has said since the beginning of his presidency, hasn't happened. And so my big question for him is, is you know, uh, w- why is it that you can't implement a single thing that you've proposed in terms of fighting corruption, in terms of rule of law, in terms of property rights? If, you, if, if he could convince me that, that there was going to be an implementation program, then I think people should invest there. But if, if all the stuff he's saying is just hot air, which it looks like so far, then it's just a bunch of, then it's just a bunch of nonsense and people shouldn't go there and they shouldn't risk their money and they shouldn't risk their people's lives. So then Bill for those who are looking at investing in Russia who have investments there uh, what would then make you more comfortable to recommend to them to invest in Russia? Is it simply a change in leadership? What is it? I don't think it has anything to do with the leadership. I mean, the leadership, I think it has something to do with the whole structure of the country, which is they need to have a proper functioning rule of law, which means that when you go to court and you have a case, that the judge doesn't just get bribed and, and rule against you. Um, at the moment, they don't have any independent judges. There's no courts. And so it means that anyone can come and take your property away at any point, and you have no recourse. And, and until that's fixed, not, none of it makes any sense. Okay. Bill, I'm going to have to leave it there, truly leave it there for now. Uh, Bill, thank you so much. And by the way, are you allowed in Russia anymore at all or no? Um, not only am I not allowed, I, I think that uh, bad things would come to, come to me if I actually um, uh, ended up back there. So I'm, I'm not planning on going back anytime soon. Okay. Bill, thank you. I appreciate you spending that time with me. Uh, Bill Browder of Hermitage Capital Management, founder and CEO, uh, joining us from Davos.